going to be showing you what's needed for you to do a migration process. Now, when you're going to start up the migration process, please contact us, letting us know that you would like to do the migration. This way we can provide you with the necessary document and the necessary spreadsheet that's needed for you to be able to begin this process. Now, when you're going to start up, SCORE is going to send over to you a spreadsheet and a Google Doc. The Google Doc is going to explain to you the required fields for this particular spreadsheet. It's very important that you follow those guidelines so that way you can be able to import your consumers in a timely fashion. Now today I'm going to go over with you each of the required fields and each of the fields that we find here. One of the first required fields that we have is the leads and the consumers. Here, when you're going to enter in, in this spreadsheet, all the customers or the leads, you have to establish which ones they are, if they're either a lead or a customer. So right next to each and every one of the information, you're going to type in here if it's a lead or if it's a customer. You're going to enter in the first name, which is mandatory. The middle name, it's not required, but if they have a middle name, you can submit it here. The last name. Now the email address. The email address is very, very important. The reason is that SCORE uses the email address as a login base. So when you enter in the email address for that particular consumer or for that lead, they'll receive an email so they can create a, um, their password for their login. Okay, so it's very important that each and every lead has an email address as well as the consumer has an e email address. And they all have to be different. No one can share the same email address. If you try to place in the spreadsheet someone with the same email address, when you're going to import, the system is going to give you an error and it's going to let you know that it wasn't going to, it's not going to let you upload it because someone is sharing the same email. Okay, so just remember to always place in the correct email for each and every leading consumer. The social security number, it's not a required field, but if you are to enter in a social security number in this field, it has to be with in this particular format. The first three numbers, the first two numbers, and then the last four numbers. Okay, you can't just put the last four because the system will not allow it and it won't let you upload it. Date of birth. With the date of birth, it works the same way. You have to put in the month the day and the year. As you can see here, what I did was I put two M's, two D's, and four Y's. So the two M's would mean that we need two digits there. So if it's in February, you would have to put zero, two, and not just two. For if it was on the first, you would have to put zero, one, so that way it can establish that the date is zero, is the first. Then the year, it would have to be complete. For example, 1999 or 1951. We would need the complete year and not just 51 or 89. We would need the complete year. Now, the zip code is a required field. It is needed to be able to add in the leader, the consumer in the system. Okay, so it's very important that each and every lead and each and every consumer has a zip code. The address. Now, it might it sounds funny, but the address is not a required field. If you don't have it, then it's okay. But the zip code is, okay? So here you're going to enter in the address one and address two if you have those details. Um, if you have them for the consumer, then it's very important that you put it in there. That way you don't have to go back and then enter it in when you're looking at the file. Then you have the home phone the work phone, the cell phone. If you have that, those details, you can't put them in there. They, not, they are not required field, but if you have the phone number, it's very important that you enter it in with as a phone number is. So for example, the first three, which would be the zip code, then the next three numbers, and then the last four numbers. Okay, so that's how you would have to enter in the phone number into the into the spreadsheet with the zip code and then the rest of the phone number. 
current employer, if you have those details, you can place it in there as well as the best time to call. Now we move on to other required fields, which is referring office, referring agent first name, referring agent last name. Now, this will turn into a required field always when you enter in a referring office. So example, if I enter in a referring office in this section here, then the referring office, um, the referring agent's first name and last name may automatically become a required field. Okay. If you don't place nothing in referral office, then these fields here, referring office, referring agents, first name and last name are not a required field. But if you do submit it, then you would have to fill in out um, these three here. It's very important that the information that you enter in there is already created in the referral base inside the platform. Okay. The lead source, if you have that information, you can place it in there but it's not a required field. With the salesperson's first name and last name works the same way. If you enter in a salesperson's first name, then it's going to be a required field for you to enter in their last name, okay? It's not a required field if you don't fill it out, but if you do, like I mentioned, and fill in one part, you have to fill in the other. And that sales rep has to be already created inside the portal, meaning that whomever you're entering in there has to have the role of sales rep. That way the spreadsheet can pick them up as a sales rep and enter them into this, to that particular consumer leads file. Next, we have the next dispute date. Here, it's very important that you give us the next dispute date. It is a required field. We would need to have the date so we can know when that consumer's next dispute is due. The outsourcing button, yes or no. This is another required field. This is going to allow us and the system to know whether the customer or the lead is going to be outsourced or not. So each and every file would have to have a yes or a no next to it. The next one is the next billing date. Now this is very, very important that it's filled out correctly. The next billing date here for each and every consumer has to be, there has to be a next billing date. This is gonna let us, the system know when the next invoice or the next billing is supposed to be created. No billing date can be past tense. So for example, if a consumer is due to be billed yesterday, then you cannot put on this, this spreadsheet yesterday's date because the system will not allow you to upload that particular consumer because their next billing date is in the past and the system can't build a pass. It always has to bill in the future, okay? So just make sure that um, all billing dates are in the future tense, so that way when you upload, the system knows exactly when their next billing date is due. Now we have the payment model plans and the payment method. Now this is very, very important that you pay very special attention to this part that I'm going to be reviewing with you. The payment model plan it's going to allow the system to know which particular payment plan each and every consumer and lead has. Okay. Now it's very, very important that the consumers that you're bringing over from a different platform have a different plan than one than the ones that would be coming in directly to the portal. And what I mean by the, this is, is if you have those old consumers that let's say you charged a consultation fee for them when they were with you at the beginning, right? At the beginning of their services, before you had them in this new platform. You're going to need to make sure that in the new platform, you create a payment plan that does not have a consultation fee um, linked to that payment plan. Why? Because then the system is going to try to pull another consultation fee for that particular person. Why? Because this, because the plan that you create in the system, if it has a consultation fee attached to it, it's going to go ahead and, and assume that that particular consumer is going to have to have a, a payment plan, um, uh, sorry, a consultation fee to be pulled. So it's very important that everyone that's coming in, that's a consumer or a lead, or more basic, a consumer that's coming into the new system that already was charged a consultation fee, that you create a payment plan that does that has a consultation fee in zero. 
That way the system does not try to pull any type of consultation fee and it just continues with the monthly recurring fees or the paper delete fees that, um, or depending on the payment plan that you have established for this particular consumer. Okay, so that's very, very important. Now the next one we have is payment method. Now with the payment method inside of ScoreCO, there's four different types of payment methods that you can write in there. There's cash, check, ACH, and credit card. If you place them on their cash or check, you do not need to fill out any of the fields from AA all the way over to AN. Okay. If you enter in ACH, then with the ACH, you have to fill out from AG all the way to AL. Okay. If you enter in credit card, you would need to enter in from double A all the way to AE. I'm sorry, AF. And then you would need to fill in out AM and AN. Okay. And this is just so the way that those are the fields that the system needs to be able to populate either their credit card information or their ACH information. Okay. Now here we have the last round number and the billing status. Okay. They are not required fields, but if you have that data, be good to put it in there. So that way you know exactly what, what round that customer was coming in previously. And then the billing status. There are um, billing status of hold or good or not funded. So you just have to make sure you use one of those three. Can't use any one that's different because the system won't allow you to upload it. Now we have the credit monitoring provider. Now these are not a mandatory or required field, but if you enter in, for example, if I enter my IQ here, my IQ report, One, if I was to enter in the credit monitoring provider, that means that once I filled out this first field, it's mandatory that I fill out the rest of the credit monitoring detail fields, okay? But if you don't enter in any da data there, then it's not going to be a required field. But like I mentioned, if you do fill out one section of the credit monitoring details, you have to fill out the rest, okay? Now the rest are not required. But here you'll see um, any pending issues that you had, you can place them in here. Uh, the issue description, the issue type, the last note, and the note type, okay? And the note type is very important that you either put CRO note or consumer note. That way we know exactly where it falls under, okay? Now this spreadsheet, it's going to be sent over to you once you request that you would like to do a migration, okay? It's going to be sent over to you with a document. Um, and it's going to, exactly what I explained to you of the required field, on that documentation, it's going to give you all of the details. I'm going to present it to you so you can I, guys have an idea of what the document shows. Okay, here it's going to be all the required fields of the spreadsheet, and it's what we just reviewed now. So once you receive that email, it's very important that you just review these um, guidelines, have it next to you when you're transferring the information over to the spreadsheet. And then once you have everything here in your spreadsheet, um, make sure that you save it, and then you can continue on to watching the next video that's going to teach you on how to import um, the migration sheet, okay? The system will notify you if at any particular moment there is an error with the spreadsheet. It'll tell you the consumer and what type of error it is. That way you can go back and make the correction to your spreadsheet, okay? If you do need any assistance, just visit the SCORE chat and we'll guide you. And thank you for your time and this is what you would need to be able to set up and begin the migration process.